Was Ernest Hemingway a misogynist? Yes or no? Today, we are here to answer that question. But first, my name is Ian, and on this channel, we cover everything book and writing related. So subscribe if you are interested in changing the world through knowledge. This July is the Hemingway Conference in Sheridan, Wyoming, in Cook City, Montana. And 50% of the conference is going to be men, and 50% of the conference is going to be women, judging from past experience of the Hemingway Conferences. And I'll be there. If you're going, hit me up, and we'll hang out. Most of the attendees of the conference have PhDs or are Hemingway scholars. Scholars. Most of the, most attendees of the conference would call themselves feminists. Also, most of the people at the conference, if you ask them, is was Ernest Hemingway a misogynist, would say absolutely not. So there's the answer to the question right there. Hit the like button and goodbye. But if you guys want to hear the big breakdown, here we go. As I'm sure you know, there are student young revolutionaries out there who are now getting older as these started really with the millennials who millennials who never learned to praise who never learned to understand that the message and the teller and the messenger have a certain separation that you can write about women in not the most positive way and that doesn't make you a misogynist you can also think for yourself and think critically and take the good from authors or thinkers and move on and not have to tear people down because that's what's happened i've taken multiple Hemingway courses at university and the last one I took right before the pandemic started was a graduate level course and there were so many people in that class all super liberal and guess what I'm apolitical so I can I can they were so liberal man and the whole we have we had a professor who was one of the top Hemingway scholars in the world and the whole freaking class the whole semester at least half of the time was arguing these little nuanced things about Hemingway's treatment of women in the text and all these different things and it got so annoying that we have someone who knows all there is to know about not just Ernest Hemingway but the whole modernist period and could and could literally blow your mind in an instant but instead people because they have this void in their soul because they have become nothing they have no spiritual mental physical and emotional journey or individual individuation in life love to tear people down when i was recent i right before this video i typed video i typed into you um google was ernest hemingway a misogynist and one of the top results was a random paper out of asia citing two ernest hemingway short story ernest hemingway short stories where he was not, where the female characters were just kind of fanatical about men two short stories there's a New York Times article blasting Ernest Hemingway and what he stood for. Yes, and let's talk about it right now. And in the book Hemingway Trauma and, Ma Trauma and Masculinity in the Garden of the Uncanny by Stephen G. Brown, a top Hemingway scholar, see him in Wyoming this year giving a presentation called The Wool Hemingway's Wolves of Yellowstone or something like that. He mends the wound between the two Hemingway camps. I'm going to go Hemingway nerding out right now for you guys. So if you guys didn't know, let's dive into Ernest Hemingway's history really fast. When Ernest Hemingway was young, his mother dressed him up like a little girl, called him Ernie. And in this, until he was six or seven years old, he was in school. And when you live in Illinois in the early 1900s and you were getting dressed like a girl, even though you were a boy and your mom's calling you Ernie, you were going to get bullied. This, it wasn't a trans, I mean, transgender ex, um, acceptance. It's just is a very new thing to our society even now. Transgender kids still get bullied and harassed. Imagine in 1900 being a kid who is being forced into a gender against their will. It was a bad time for Ernest because his mom wanted a girl and his dad was pretty absent. And what a disaster, right? That caused a lot of trauma. And of course, later on in life, that's going to cause a lot of hyper masculinity at one level of the dialect. It can go a couple different ways, but one way that can go is Ernest Hemingway with the gun, the phallus, you know, as they loved all the scholars love to say that his love of guns was the phallic projection. Hemingway's writing style of the, you know, the iceberg theory was a way to just you know, show just pure masculinity and hide some more of the feminine aspects. There's all these different arguments. But the other side, so a lot of people will argue that angle, that a lot of Hemingway's trauma in life and hyper-masculinity came from that. But also, if you know about Hemingway, he served in World War One, but he couldn't get in to serve as an actual military officer because of, a, of health issues. So he had to serve as an ambulance driver for the Red Cross, and he got injured. He had, he got, I think, an injury to his leg, if I'm remembering correctly. But it's kind of weird telling the story about how you got injured as an ambulance driver. That shouldn't matter, but as you guys know, people back then made a big deal about the war and what you were doing. So 
Ernest felt a little bit emasculated because of that. And if, as you read, if you read like the Nick Adams series, for instance, all this comes up. The Nick, Nick Adams short story collection. If you just kind of read through that, I would recommend everyone go get the Ernest Hemingway complete short stories and then just look up the Nick Adams stories. Now, well, basically, it's basically a field guide to trauma and trauma mitigation, even though he killed himself. You know, um, I had this, the professor that I had, he would always talk about how Hemingway could show us how to heal trauma. And I always wanted to be like, well, he didn't do a very good job because he ended up killing himself. But the reason he killed himself, not to go off too far, was because he experienced electroshock therapy and he couldn't write anymore. He couldn't have the creative artistic flow and the electroshock therapy really screwed him up. What a terrible time to be alive and need mental health treatment. But there are these two different camps in the Hemingway world. And that's where they say this hyper-masculinity, maybe a little bit of misogyny comes through. And I can acknowledge that men in the early 1900s, if we're looking at most people, even today, if I go look at my neighbor on both sides of me, um, I can't think of all the people I've, of all of my neighbors in my neighborhood, excuse me, my neighborhood who actually respect women a hundred percent. That actually is something that requires a lot of personal development. And the same people who are throwing out the label of misogynist probably have prejudice or hate in their heart at some level. So, you know, throwing that term around, trying to cancel someone or bring someone down, uh, uh, rather than trying to help them grow and become something better and, you know, of, you know, you know dead now so we can't really do that and that's also the reason like what the what the hell are we doing trying to you know attack someone older and that's because a lot of people now a lot of authors now authors now respect Hemingway a lot of um young men and men love Ernest Hemingway and that's just a way to bring down this supposed white patriarchal system in the university system of the the white canon except the problem is is if we look at writing as a meritocracy meritocracy unfortunately because of oppression a lot of the best writers pre-1900 were yes dead white men it's an unfortunate reality there are some exceptions there but that's just the reality of language and literature and if we can accept that and move on then we can create and and praise those people and learn from them then all groups and communities can become better and spread their messages better because they aren't just you know tearing everyone down who are actually legends and worked very hard so i can acknowledge that ernest hemingway didn't treat women that well i mean i don't he there's no accounts of him abusing women he had multiple wives but a lot of people have multiple wives um that's not a very uncommon thing that doesn't make you a misogynist let's dive into another thing they say okay a lot of hemingway's characters excuse me women in hemingway's novels and short stories sometimes are fanatical about men or they're just kind of dumb or ditzy you know the typical the typical stuff but that in and of itself doesn't make you a misogynist doesn't make you hate women because you might have a certain writing style you might have a certain idea or be good at something and you're just trying to push that out our imagination should not be judged it's not like ernest hemingway was systematically trying to change our opinion on women for instance i was i've been a part of i was a part of this big writers workshop in town and at some point, it was really crazy. This is so crazy. There was this radicalization. A bunch of new people started showing up, right? And they, everything was all good. And they were kind of sucky at writing. But then they started turning in these short stories. And there was actually like kind of these weird racist overtones or like undertones hidden in there. And all of them started doing it. And then eventually, the group had to like boot them out. But during the booting out process, then a bunch of um, SJWs took over. Then anything that had anything to do with... Uh, demeaning women gay people whoever even if it was in context of a story suddenly wasn't allowed because of this incident inc incident where a bunch of racists came in and tried to ruin the group and overtake it and implement their ideas i'm not getting that from hemingway at all are you what do you think about all this i've been sitting here and talking about this but what do you is ernest hemingway a misogynist Do, and so let's analyze this a little bit deeper though when what my biggest rebuttal to the argument about making women that way is that what other author at the time had had the nuance in relationships if you look at a lot of Hemingway's novels protagonist and the male protagonist and his female um, relationship partner actually had deep conversations and nuance and they were starting to um, actually they had emotional connections that resembled love there's a lot of people now that don't even aren't even able to do that that, that it really for the time was very progressive and very love oriented and if you once again start reading about some of scholarship on Hemingway's life and his biography he actually enjoyed some of that love stuff but he was fueled by trauma so what do you want to say here what's more important that he really understood love and the nuances of relationship or he maybe created some one-dimensional female characters who really weren't that one-dimensional because they understood the concept of love so I get a little bit confused during these conversations and most of the time when people are doing this you can tell there's a certain energy when people make these claims it's like I don't care 
if there's these little tiny things in the writing or these one-dimensional characters, if Ernest Hemingway had a history of beating every single woman he was with, I was like, okay, maybe we have something to go with here. Should we really be elevating this guy, you know? Should we really be talking about this other than maybe for some small craft stuff? But none of that exists. And once again, this is all just a systematic approach. The real systematic prejudice here is the prejudice against older writers who are good because people now, like I just talked about in my Time as a Mother book review about Ocean Bunk, love to just spread crappy writing. They just love to push crappy writing out there because we are, as a society, are getting dumber. We are becoming, we are now post-literate. Even though everyone is literate, people don't have the ability to critically think as they're just droning away on TikTok all day. They don't have the ability to reason, to even feel that you know that's the crazy part is like everyone talks about rationality the, the the conservatives are like the liberals can't be rational and the liberals are like the conservatives can't feel and it's like none of you guys really know how to do any of that because you guys are stuck in dialects so if you guys have any questions about this hopefully i cleared up some of the cobwebs about ernest hemingway being a misogynist and like, like whoa 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 in the garden of eden ernest hemingway's last posthumous um posthumous novel um, there was one more but the really last good one he basically had uh, he was really starting to explore transgenderism in that novel and you know what so progressive like this is not a simple character because that you know of course was something that he had to go through at some level what because he got dressed up as a girl so uh, Ernest Hemingway for the time and for the place was very progressive and anyone like I said that you talk to at an Ernest at the Ernest Hemingway conference if you would give a much more eloquent response than I just did, but they would tell you something similar. So don't listen to me, listen to them, and I will see you guys later. Go check out some more videos on Ernest Hemingway when I release them because there's going to be a ton here soon. Peace.